Hey everybody, uh, gonna go over some uh, function of IPmix. I've made some updates uh, today, and so I kinda wanna go over them and sort of show you how this whole workflow happens. Right now, uh, we've got a Shima set up uh, on the left with a commons, a loader, and a sampler. All of these are uh, 1.5. We're using a regex on our output for gen underscore image, as we almost always do and those are being fed up here to these two image passers. Image pass one on the top here will feed to image one and image pass two will feed to image two in these switches here. If I were to switch these away from one on this front one, rather than being uh, fed by the template workflow, it would get fed instead by this image here. Right? But in this case, this image will go unused because we're wanting to get the image we generate down here. Um, the second one, you'll see right now it says gen image. That's because we really are only running a one sampler setup right now. And this um, has to be satisfied by something. When you load it uh, via the template, and I'll show you that real quick. Right click, node templates, and anime. You'll see that there is this little sacrificial image right here um, with gamma girl in it um, this is so that if you just load this template which you can do right on its own uh, you can still use it but what you would end up doing is if you loaded it in the course of a of a larger setup you would delete this right let's go ahead and get rid of all of these because we don't really need them uh, group remove uh, hate when there we go. All right. Sometimes I don't know what that is, but sometimes there's a little strange thing where you have to do multiple deletions um, with income VUI when you have a bunch of nodes deleting at once. So if anyone knows how to solve that, uh, hit me up. It'd be cool to know. Uh, anyway, back to the matter at hand. So we've already done this generation uh, prior to this, um, but we're going to go ahead and do it again. Uh, in our loader here, we're using Animerge, and we are giving a prompt that's pretty simplistic. It's just anime Swedish woman, cherry nobody, delivers this cute redhead. Um, and we have a just a simple, you know, bad image embedding uh, for the negative prompt. Uh, and that will produce this image here. And we're sending it off, as I said, with gen image to both of these, right? Over here, we're selecting the workflow uh, template workflow image number one, so that's going to pull this, and then image two is going to pull root beer girl here. And then on our control net, I've got uh, switch two turned on, so that means this one is going to be used, and I'm using color. So I want to take some of the colors from this image, and I want to inject them into the IP adapter image. Um, and the other two are off. They're just there. They have nothing to do with this particular generation. Uh, down here in the prompt for the IP adapter, we're once again using Animerge, same as on the left, <coughs> uh, and add detail Laura, and then uh, at strength six, and I'm putting in red hair, purple bathing suit. Bad panatomy is a purposeful mistake. Uh, sort of a happy accident uh, where that extra P stopped the Eiffel Tower from showing up in the background accidentally and on the beach, which made no sense. So I kept it. All right. So when we push a uh, Q prompt here, uh, we're going to basically be combining this image and this image together according to this prompt and injecting these colors into our output. All right, and we have generated a final image here. You can see here where we're looking at the two different attention areas. I've done uh, the left or right eye of her here, uh, eye on the left-hand side, with a little chunk of the hair so that we can get some of those colors in. Uh, down here, I'm just using this so that I can get the uh, bathing suit uh, colors uh, and you know basically style of that suit. And then over here, I've got, of course, our uh, colors coming in from our um, control net, color control net. 
and the end result is pretty convincing blend of those three things. We've got, you know, this bathing suit. Um, we have some red hair. We did prompt for red hair down here, as I said, uh, because of um, this particular image having so much blonde hair in it, and this image also having so much blonde hair from the color adapter. Uh, without putting red hair in the prompt, uh, it would not generate red hair. It just wanted a blonde uh, all the time. And so uh, that was the fix there. Now, for this, right, uh, the attention area is modifiable by these X and Y positions for, uh, cr uh, for the image number one and the image number two that you're feeding in, right? So what I do here, this is obviously uh, X 179 over, and it's 202 pixels down, right? If I wanted to get more of the hair in there, I might reduce it on the X some, if I say that much. And if I click Q prompt again, you'll see that now the attention area has changed, right? And the same would be true down here, right? And when you do that, it's going to generate a new image. Now, probably won't be appreciably different, but we will see some differences, obviously. So let's see what we get. And there we go. It's actually pretty good, maybe even a little better. So. Uh, there we go. That's kind of the how this whole thing operates. Um, just to show you that it doesn't just do, you know, hot anime chicks. Uh, let's go ahead and load in the interior design workflow for this. Now, all these images are being pulled in, or a lot of these are being pulled in from our last generation. This is something that recently started happening uh, in Comfy for me. Uh, previously, when you loaded a new workflow, everything would get blanked out. Um, now it tries to sort of put in the last images, which is kind of cool, but also kind of confusing. Not a big fan, actually. Um, in any case, um, let's look at what our prompts are, because they are obviously not this. Japanese bedroom with light wood accents, 8K, 8K photo like an Ikea catalog, right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and click Q prompt here, and it's gonna build what is actually a pretty ugly image, but I didn't really try to, um, you know, tweak it much. It's going to give us a double image at this seed, but as you'll see in the end, the end result is pretty good. We've got two images here uh, in one, so two for the price of one, and the bottom one is like a bedroom, which is good because we're going to have uh, a bed in the next picture. So let's let it finish up, and it is, and now it's going to go over here and send all this over you know we could adjust these if we wanted to but we'll just leave them as is and then down here in our prompt a modern child's bedroom in nordic and japanese style and so this is what it has produced it's also using the same color um, adapter from this image here this input image and you can definitely see the influence of these colors on the image because they obviously do not exist uh, within this image, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, and we get you know some of the some of the elements, the bed and stuff uh, from the last. We looks like we've got a little bit of the influence over here on the right. Um, so just to show you that it doesn't have to work with just you know character art it can work with anything and in fact this is actually pulling in really good results i'm actually surprised because we did not change our model uh, to anything architectural specific right it's just still using the animerge model that's which is sort of like a 2.5d um, anime model so the fact that that model is able you know utilizing the um, inputs here and here and here, well, actually not here, here and here, right? And then our color control net um, to produce something like so, you know, with an anime model is actually really quite impressive. So um, I might have to rerun this in a bit with a architectural model and see if it comes up even better. All right, that's about it for today. Uh, I really appreciate it and I hope this helps. Um, anyway, uh, keep making cool stuff. Later.